How's it going people? Welcome back to AFTV. It's the warm-up for Newcastle this weekend, Premier League back in action. I say warm-up, I hope the team choose to warm up this time because that last performance against Villarreal, this in the first five minutes, <laughs> say no more. Mm. Back again, James and Cecil, how are you guys feeling about this Newcastle I'm game? I'm getting more angry actually as time goes on from that Villarreal game. Because I think because now that we're previewing Newcastle, my mind's like, wow, this doesn't mean anything because mm. we just because we've been so bad. Mm. So like, I almost I want to just say, look, it doesn't matter. All eyes on next Thursday. But I'm still like, deep within me, I'm like, how how have we got to this position in a season where even top six is done? Yeah. Even realistically, top eight is incredibly unlikely. And I'm thinking, like, how have we got to this stage? So, yeah, I'm annoyed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, listen. Good you, to see you too. <laughs> you guys already know how I feel. I think the Premier League, in terms of the way I saw it, there's been nothing left in it for a little while. Mm. But usually I'd look at this game as prep for next Thursday. I was going to that was going to be my thing. That but was. That's, does, go on. Yeah, go on, Sister. No, no that's on. exactly what I was going to say. Like, I, normally we say, do we care? Is this a game that we care about? No, it's not. But it's prep for Thursday. Like, but then I think that when we do our 11s, I've got a team that I want Arteta to use to prepare for Thursday, but he probably won't because he never does anything that, yeah. what, what, you'd, what you'd normally go with. So again, and I'm piggyback off what James says, just getting more and more annoyed. It's like, okay, played terrible against Villarreal. Let's look at back at our last Premier League game. We lost to Everton. Like, you can't, you can't take no positives from that. Like, and the one just, before that? A draw. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it just these warm ups are just getting, I, I want to be positive, I really do. But how? how? Positivity needs to come from the club. Just, you know, yeah, there's only anything. so much positivity us fans can bring. We can hope for the best, we can believe, but if the club don't, you know, fulfil that belief, that potential, mm. because it, essentially Villarreal are a team we should be getting past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can still get past them, but this Sunday now I look at it as there's a lot of players that played against Villarreal that I believe let us down yet again. Do we go with a lot of those players again? We will get into starting eleven soon enough later on in the mm. episode. But do we go with you know similar players, or do we give a few new ones a chance, like the Balligans and Nelsons? Like I said, we'll go into starting elevens and we'll see what we've picked later on in the show. Let's have a look at Newcastle for mm. a little bit now, and you mm. know they're in a completely well, I say completely different battle to us. They're in a battle that we're closer to than the battle at the top, if I'm <laughs> honest. And they're in better form. Um, yeah. They're going into this game in decent form. That's the reality of it. Joe Willock's had a, had a real impact. I'm sure he'd probably be one of the danger men if it was for the fact that you know, obviously he can't play. 100%. Game, you know, 100%. Yeah. That's a blessing. Can you imagine the player we've sent out on loan? We're lucky he's not playing against us. I mean, what is wrong with this club, man? Do you, do you, on, on that, big up Tigo and um, Filthy Fellas. He is our top goal scorer midfielder. Yeah, no, know, know, four, yeah, in, yeah, in the Europa League, with four goals. Um, yeah. So out of everyone else, we can look at the... No, but I think he's got Partes. more league goals than all of yeah, Arsenal yeah, midfielders if you, combined. If you, if, yeah, if you can back... Um, Sounds like he'd make a good well. false nine, doesn't it? <laughs> like, <laughs> Listen, with Joe Willock, yeah, people can talk about his numbers and whatnot, but essentially Joe Willock is he's, in a place where he fits. Yeah, agreed. You know? I 100% agree at, with that, by the way. his age, the, the potential he has, I think Newcastle is a great club for him to be at mm. at this moment. You can't, we can't just translate what he's done there to Arsenal no, and think I'm it's not, enough. I, I agree completely agree. But beyond that, because he's been a bit of a super sub, he says himself that he doesn't like that. But, you know, forget that. And yeah, he's had some big moments. They're doing all right anyway. I mean, you go back six games ago, they lost 3-0 to Brighton. But since mm. then, a good point against Spurs, a game they should have won. They, were playing really, they played really well that day. Obviously, they very recently got that very late goal against, well, two late goals against mm. Liverpool. Mm -hmm. yeah. Obviously, one didn't stand, which I couldn't believe. But they also beat, they beat West Ham and they beat Burnley, I think, mm -hmm. away from home. You yeah. know, they've, they've got some really good results out of that. And people were looking at that run of games and saying, well, this could be the end of Newcastle. Um, but they've, you know, Steve Bruce has found something within him. And I know Newcastle fans aren't happy with the job he's doing. I, can, I understand why I'm not going to be one of these people who goes, you know, what do you expect? You know, you're yeah. Newcastle, you should just be grateful to be in there. I'm not going to say that. They're, they're a massive club and they should expect better. But credit where credit's due, he seems to have turned things around a little bit. Um, and for that reason, I'm not confident going into this because they're the form side. Yeah, that, uh, listen, at the end of every season, we tend to see the teams in and around the relegation battle, you know, improve. They mm. become a bit more consistent because I think a lot of their players are suited more to that down and dirty type of game that the end of the season relegation battle brings. Right, okay. mm. So, yeah, uh, you know, I expected this. Fulham had a little upturn in form prior to their four game losses 
before us and then they pull the point out the bag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> New, Are you on a bad run? Play Arsenal. Exactly. That's the way. That's the way exactly. to get yourselves out of it. Mm. So, yeah, it, it, it's not going to be easy. Um, I, I'm, um, I'll say that every game, every warm up, I'm saying it's not going to be easy. But and it never is. Yeah, yeah, yeah but these are games that should be. That's kind of the reason why I'm saying this. I'm never going to sit here on a Man United warm up and say it's not going to be easy. Well, yeah, no, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But Newcastle, Villarreal, Fulham at home, Slavia, Prague, they should be. And we're sitting here kind of sweating it. Like, yeah. Oh, God, I hope we get through. Yeah. Like, what? What are yeah. we. What's going on here? It's but, the club. Yeah. The levels have all dropped to the point where even us fans now, you know, we can't believe and hope. Because the I don't think we'll beat. I don't think we'll beat Newcastle. Yeah, we're going to do, do predictions right. at the end, and, but I, I don't think we're going to win this game. Yes. In fact, I would. If I had to pick a winner, I think they'll win it. Yeah, I'm that. genuinely. Yeah, this is a complete yeah. turnaround. A few weeks ago, I stepped in the AFTV door, and <laughs> we I smiling. sounded like James just now. <laughs> now we're here, and James sounds like me. But I get it. You know, I understand. I, I completely understand because. There isn't much to believe in this season. There isn't much left for us this season. Mm. This Newcastle game, all we can see it as is prep. Yeah. For them, it's not prep it's for them. Yeah, for them, it's, there's something more to it. You know, there's a bit mm. of survival, something to build on for next season. Mm. Obviously, they've got a big problem with their owner like we, like we do, and mm. they've had that problem for a, a bit longer than we have. But, but I'm leaning more towards your side of the fence. I feel like Agreed. if anyone's going to get the three points, it would be Newcastle. We'll, we'll round up with predictions, but let's mm. get into something Arteta's said in yeah. his latest press conference. Yeah, so obviously we, we haven't got anything from him just yet for, for this game, but from the Villarreal press, press post-match press conference, I liked what he said here, so I'm just going to quickly read you what was said. The reporter said, is the Europa, semi- Europa League semi-final the right time to be taking gambles? And this one stood out to me because it got to Arteta. Yeah. He bit at this big time. This was his response. He said, guys, when we won 4-0 away from home against Slavia, Prague, when they didn't lose a home game in three years and Granite played incredibly well playing there, but I know when it doesn't happen, it will, we all point to there. So he's basically saying he's taking the risk. In my opinion, we should be looking at the, the full nine, but he's saying about the left back and Granite playing there. Um, but he, he was, didn't he answer the question, it. did he? No. He mm. didn't answer the question, he swerved it. Like, you're mm. being asked, is it the right time to experiment? The first time we played a false nine, you didn't play a false nine against mm. Slavia Prague. Xhaka played against them, but does Slavia Prague have as good a winger as a Chuk Weezy, as a Richarlison? Exactly. You know, it's not coincidence that the first two decent wingers he's come up against, he's been beaten in a one-on-one situation, and mm. it's resulted in a goal. And Xhaka just played left-back at Sheffield United where he won 3-0. Yeah. So, you know... I don't know what I don't know what he's talking about. Mm. I, I don't know. I think he's lost his head. Sorry. He did. He did. He, he clearly affected him on that. And I'm someone that that has wanted an improvement in the types of questions being asked. And I think that is a perfect. Not only for Arteta, I believe across the board, managers should be getting asked more definitive questions mm. like that. Mm. No beating around the bush, because you you get you know you get more out of it as a mm. fan, in my opinion. Because if I could ask a question. I would ask a question in that way. Yeah. Mm. You know, what kind of a time is this to experiment? And if that's the answer I was given, I wouldn't be happy. Mm. So no, yeah. neither would I. And just to quickly touch on, to be fair, Jacka in that video game, I know, doing a warm-up from Newcastle, in the second half, I actually think he played OK. I think he actually had a good game after this, his mistake in the first half. He settled but into it, I suppose. I think he, for good for his standard. I think that's, that's what it was. I was actually Good for surprised. a makeshift, makeshift, left, makeshift back. left back with yeah. the... With the um, What's the word? Problems he has in his game. Mm. I think you're right. He settled in the second half. I think the whole team settled in the second half. Mm. That first half... Was diabolical. Yeah, that first half was diabolical. So let's move on to maybe the shape of the team, who we want to see in there, some starting lineups. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to... Before we go into starting lineups, the man on the screen right now, that was going to be my danger man. I'm sure we're very very aware of who he is. Saint Maximan. I'm just going to make sure we get the pronunciation right. Everyone all right with that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We yeah, good? It's good, it's good. Everyone good? Yeah, you Say haven't no. butchered it. You haven't renamed him. We're good, man. <laughs> <laughs> we can ch- we can chuckle, but um, yeah, he's had three goals this season, four assists. We, listen, forget the numbers. We know how much of a problem he is. Yeah, and yeah. Um, we're going to get into our 11s. I do worry. I've got Xhaka in the left back position. We're going to go to it in the second. I do worry about that. With Saint Maximum. So you should. But yeah, so you, know, you should. But yeah. I think both sides is a worry. Whichever side he comes from. Yeah. Considering I don't know. Right now, it doesn't seem like Arteta even knows what fullbacks to be playing. I don't think he knows his strongest eleven. I think I, he has I, and, season. and I don't think he knows his best formation because the last couple of games we've played four three three. Yeah, you know, mm. I kind of realised 
Yeah, Odegaard's technically the 10, but he's playing really the right of a three, yep. and Smith Rowe's playing the, or, or Sabasa playing the left of Partey. So it was more 4 3 3. So suddenly we've moved away from what was quite a dynamic, fluid, energetic kind of front four. Now it feels a bit more rigid. I don't have a problem with that City play like that. Liverpool have played the 4 3 3. It's, it, it's a formation that works for the very best sides, but. I think this, the team have to have some fluidity about their play. Their yeah. general instinctive football's got to be better. Mm. So, and the key words yeah. there is very best sides. Yeah. Something we can't relate to right now. Yeah. But you are right. It's a bit weird, you know. It's, it's, this ain't the first formation Arteta's tried. And judging by the false nine against Villarreal, it won't be the last one he tries because yeah. we've been through about four different formations now since mm. he's been in. Yeah. And it's a bit worrying that coming into your biggest game of the season, you've not changed a formation but you've changed the approach. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That worries me a lot. Yeah. He hasn't, he hasn't played the same team in, the, in, the con- in a consecutive game. I think he's done it once this whole season. Yeah, well, on that, it's been once even with Unai Emery and I think that stretches back to mm. Wenger times as well. Mm-hmm. I just think that's a mix of a poor squad injuries and, and imbalance because we've been imbalanced in that squad for years. Yeah. But St. Maximin is clearly their biggest threat. I think Almiron Quality deserves player, some credit. Yeah. Because yeah, Almiron well, can, yeah. can do fi- Callum Wilson, he hasn't had the best of seasons mm. there, but he's, he's a good striker on his mm. day. So I yeah. think Newcastle pose threats, definitely. Yeah, definitely. 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 So who, who, who's in your starting 11 then? All right, so let's go straight into it. So I've gone for a 4 3 3, gone Leno and goal. Um, my idea behind this is prepare for Thursday, try something that I think could work. Um, it's quite similar to the one I did in the build up for Villarreal. So 4 3 3, got Cedric at right back. Um, left back, I have put Xhaka back in there. Um, the reason for this, we're going to do, I want Holden and Mari in the back line. It's a very solid back line in the sense of defensive. That's, that's all I want you to do. Don't want you to go forward, get forward and think, just be solid at the back, okay? That's your job. Don't worry about going forward because in front of them, I've got Partey in a, in a defensive midfield by himself and then the two in front of him, Odegaard and Smith Rowe. Let them go play, yeah. yeah? Let them play. Just you guys, Partey in the back line, worry about defending, yeah? Mm-hmm. That's what you need to do. And then let them play in front and then up front, I'm going off players that are in contention, which we got told, yeah. but I'm ignoring that and just saying, I've seen a Bamiang come on against Villarreal, so yeah, I know fine. he's going to be fit, so I'm going to put him down the middle. And then left, on the left, Pepe, on the right, Saka. Okay. okay. James, okay. how does yours differ? Quite a bit, actually. Leno keeps his place, um, and as you mentioned, a full-time, big up to him, it was a good response the other night, and he kept us mm. in the tie. Yeah. Um, Cedric comes in because it's so bleeding obvious that he should be our starting right back, and, and, I, and I still can't believe that this was even a discussion. Mm-hmm. When he started to play more ahead of Bellerin, I thought, okay, great, Arteta's seen the light. Bellerin's been in bad form, Cedric's been doing really well. And then I know a Chambers comes in. Yeah. And Chambers has done fine for a makeshift right back. Exactly. But he's not like, wh- what's he telling us? That that's it, you know, we don't need a right back this summer because Chambers has come yes, through. Let's hope not. I, 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 so I, I don't know what's going on On top on of that, he bought Cedric. Let's not forget that. That's this. the thing, it's his signing. Yeah, that's what yeah. throws me off. And, and he also came in saying, I remember the first yeah, one, this I is know our, this quote, yeah. he's the best attacking fullback we have. Yeah, mm-hmm. I remember that as well. Then he gets put behind Bellerin. Now he's put behind Chambers. It's nuts. It's, cra- it's, it's crazy. It's nuts. It makes very Cedric starts sense. for me any day. Uh, Louise and Gabriel, because kind of going with the logic you had, they were both on the bench. So as far as I'm aware, you're fit to play. So yeah. Louise and Gabriel start for me. They're our best centre-back partnership. They're our best centre-backs. Yep. We did a live stream months ago and people couldn't believe that we had Holding at the bottom of the list. <laughs> we basically had Gabriel, Louise, Mary Holding. And people were like, are you crazy? Your bottom two should be your top two. Yeah. But no, I've always said, listen, Louise's experience and kind of like, he's got that kind of dirty winner's mentality about him. Like he's going to do, he'll do the nasty things if he has to. Yeah. He'll, but he's a very classy footballer as well. And then you've got kind of, um, Gabriel's kind of, Youthful, I don't know, he's strong, he's mobility, yeah. Yeah, mobility, yeah, he's mobility, good on the yeah. ball as yeah. well. Those two are our best centre back partnerships. Uh, Saka left back, just do it, just put a proper, if Tinney's not available, just get a proper left footed dynamic option down that side. Yeah. Saka goes in there, Partey, Jacker in midfield, Pepe on the right, he's done well recently. Just, you know, bring Saka out, let Pepe have that role. Odegaard in the middle, Smith Rowe on the left and Aubameyang up front. That's a good, that's a good team. It is. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I didn't pick a team. Oh. <laughs> I didn't pick a team. I, I, start, I started. I started, yeah, and then What's I just thought. I, I just put the phone down. I'm actually like, I'm not even halfway through What's it. Going on? Imagine, imagine turning up and going, I'm not going to do work today. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> I, I hate I, this club. I, listen, it's here. Like, I picked Leno 
And, and, then, then, and said, then I stopped. And yeah. I just said, you know what? What am I picking a lineup for? In all honesty. What's going on? I hit, no, no, I don't hear it. Fair. All right. I don't know. All I'm going to say is I don't want to see Ceballos. I want to oh. see Cedric. I want to see Martinelli. Uh, the rest, I actually don't give a shit. <laughs> the re- I don't. Jesus Christ. Honestly, I don't. If you put Reese Nelson there, cool. I understand. If you put Balogun in there, I understand. If we go with a false nine, I don't understand. If you go with your full strength, in quote marks side, I won't understand it again because, yeah. listen, it's all good and well saying you can build off a positive result, but the last few weeks and the last couple of months have showed us that playing your strongest team in these games might not breed a positive result yeah. and it might do more damage than good. So I'd rather see wholesale changes in the side, take out the players that you know are going to start next Thursday, if anything, give them 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. And just put everything on that Thursday game. Show us everything is on that Thursday. Stop talking about the Premier League, Arteta, and acting like there's something left in it. There's nothing left in it. Play Balogun. He just signed a new contract. Play him. Mm. Don't play Ceballos. His head is in La Liga. His head's somewhere else. Uh, Fabrizio Romano has confirmed but, that... Uh, actually, sorry, I need to add this because this is a big development. Cool. So Romano tweeted that um, Ceballos is leaving at the end of the season and that's been decided, like... It's been a few weeks that that's been decided. Interesting. You know, I'll check the tweet now. And Bellerin has said similar, but like, he gets dropped out of the side. But so why is the Sabayos at the side? If this has been decided, know. then what on earth is he doing? Starting anywhere the near the squad. Anywhere near the squad. Because you clearly don't that, believe he's a joke. Uh, yeah. Just I'm, that I'm sentence from Sabayos about preferring La Liga, El Nene gets ahead of him. I'm not saying El Nene is better than him, mm. but what I'm saying is El Nene at least it seems like his head is here. Mm. Yeah. He's not the best of players. You know, the best you're going to get is him doing his job at the very most, mm. but at least you're not coming out flirting with other clubs yeah. when your biggest game of the it's season very, is around the corner. It's very cheeky of him, because in the game, he didn't have a great game even in the Spanish I think Spanish he team. tries, I like, think he tries, but it's a mentality. This isn't about uh, like work ethical application. This is about eat your head clear somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. And this is Romano's tweet. Danny Sabas expected to leave us at the end of the season. The decision's been made weeks ago. The midfield will come back to Madrid after spending the season on loan with Arsenal, then decide his future. If it's, been, if it's been known for, for a few weeks now, why is he starting? It's a joke. Why is he here? Mm. You know, that's, that's what we've got to ask ourselves. I don't know, we've signed a loan player for two seasons. We've got another loan coming in January. Like I mentioned in full time, we've got two loanees starting for us in our biggest game of the season. It's, it's not right. When you yeah. read that on paper, it's not right. I mean, I've always said, look, Take back to the summer 2016 when we finished second. We bought Xhaka and Mustafi. We haven't finished top four since. But if you look at when Sabayos come in, we haven't finished top seven since Sabayos has come in. Mm. And it's not like a Kieran Tierney where he's been out with injuries, inconsistent like Thomas yeah. Partey injuries. He's actually been a clean bill of health for a couple of seasons, but we've regressed. We lacked some one of his ilk in the middle. He hasn't come in and made it his own. Mm. And now with a few weeks left of the season, right. he's talking about other... We've needed a Ceballos type, just a much, much, much better but, version. Of yeah. course. And I, I, I don't think you get to Madrid and, and Arsenal and, and captain the under-21s or Spain under-21s to the championship if you've not got something about you. He's got something about him. Mm. But I, I, I wonder if maybe he lacks something like mentally in terms of his, his kind of like... Sometimes he runs around and I'm like, just because you're running around a lot, you're trying, but sometimes it's not about running round lots. Yeah, it's yeah. about having a degree of... Look at Kevin De Bruyne. He doesn't run... I know we're comparing apples and oranges, but De Bruyne doesn't run, run around like a madman, but he yeah. still works really hard, mm. right? So I just think he lacks something like that. The talent's there, but yeah, yeah. I agree. Doesn't start this weekend and, and actually doesn't start for the rest of the season. That's it. You're going back to Madrid. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Thanks for the FA yeah, Cup. Yeah. Thanks for trying. I don't think he's one of those lone players that came and didn't care. You know, I think he actually tried to give what he can, but... It wasn't yeah. good enough. It yeah. wasn't good enough. And it wasn't good enough and it's done. Troops yeah. talk about him being a spinning top and that's when I watch him now, that's all that plays, replays in my mind. <laughs> that's what it's like. He's just erratic and presses. Yeah. He unintelligently presses. Listen, but I, he has I, got I, 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 lo- I love Troops and, and, and he cracks me up. And, <laughs> and, and I think a lot of people have used this spinning top thing, but, you know, Cazorla, he, he used to spin on the ball all the time. But the point is, if you're good enough and you're classy and, and it leads to something, we love all that. But there's got to be something behind it. Hundred percent. You know, I, I don't criticise Sabios's his, his ways. I just think it's kind of what the end result, what you get out of it. There's I'd agree. There. I'd a agree. little they're playing devil's advocate. I know we've got to kind of move on, but could this ever happen to Martin Odegaard in the sense of he? We might have, Sabios might have just lowered his standard because of the team he's in, or do you think no Odegaard's a different sort of level that he 
plays, he keeps himself at a high calibre. No idea, yeah. yeah. I think Odegaard's lifted us since he's come in, yeah. um, personally. Mitch, so I, yeah. think, I, think, I think it's different. I think we look a better side because we have Odegaard. Odegaard's different, Ilk. You can, you can tell. Cool. You mm. can tell when a man gets the ball, you know, the yeah. way he's, his presence on the pitch mm. is different than Sabahs. Yeah. But listen, I agree, Sabahs can sit in the corner of Bellerin until the end of the season and then they can <laughs> so. make their way off to wherever they want to go. Mm. Might be know? the sad reality, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I want to wrap it up with what? You guys might call predictions. I'm going to call it guesses. What are we guessing this weekend? When I sent you the plan, I put predictions slash guesses. Oh, oh yeah, 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 you did, you did. Because I was like, who knows? Yeah, I'm knows? guessing 2-1 Newcastle. I think there's much more on the line for them. And I think there's nothing on the line for us. Can, Sorry, I, show, can I show you how much that this means nothing to me? Go on. And I'm being very honest. Have you babe. not got a score predict? Because if you no, haven't no, got no. a line-up, I'll be intrigued to hear your I'll score prediction. I'll be home or away. We're away. We're away. Okay, that's news to me. <laughs> Because I don't give a shit. Home, away, neutral Turkey ground, P45's power league, place. goals. I don't care where they play right now. Turkish woke up this morning and just thought, you know what? <laughs> F it, boy. Yeah, hey, I was Forget here. Listen. This. For the record, I still care. Like, uh, I what? always, okay. I say all this, then I go into the game and I'm, and I'm like, nah, it's 90 minutes, I want to win. But do you, do you know what will get me into it? If I see Tierney getting minutes, if I see Lacazette, if I see Louise back in there, then I'll be thinking... Okay, do you know what? I've got some care and investment in these these boys in particular. Yeah. So go get a result. That's when maybe I'll change my tune a little bit. At the moment, yeah, all eyes are on next Thursday. So you're guessing 2-1 Newcastle, I'm yeah? I'm guessing 2-1 Newcastle, yeah. Why do we think that we're going to do much better than Spurs and Liverpool? Very true. Sorry. West Ham. Let's not forget that. West Ham. Yeah, let's Sorry, not West Ham, them. exactly. Why do we think we're going to do better than them? They, could, they can get anything against Newcastle or no more than a point, a lot yeah. of those teams. So now I, I, I think, I don't, I, don't see us, uh, I don't see us getting a result. 2-1, Cecil. I don't even know, bro. Uh, I want to be positive, but they've, the team's shown me no, nothing for me to be positive for. There's no, you know what I mean? There's nothing they've shown me to say, oh, we could nick a, a draw. Yeah. <laughs> in, in, in recent weeks? In recent weeks, yeah, in recent weeks. 1-0 um, Newcastle. Yeah, fucking hell, two hours. I seem like the positive one. I'm just going to say 2-2. Two, two. Because I don't know. You're deluded. Yeah, no. imagine. Uh, no, look. <laughs> I don't know. Would I be surprised if we won 3-0? No. That's, this is the yeah. thing with Arteta and this team. Mm. It's a li- like last thing I'll say on this is, my, what's dis- disappointing is that I saw us progress. A lot of people were laughing at me going, you know, really? Like, we're still ninth. Is that progression? I did see progression. But I think we've, re- we've regressed since March, really. Yeah. And that's where I worry. So now I've got no idea what will happen. Sometimes... Y- the West Ham game, we're 3-0 down, we put about 3-3, saw the best and worst. Mm. The, the North London derby, we played brilliantly until Spurs went down to 10 men and then we were terrible. I have no idea what you're going to get from this team. If you played your 11 that you, you've chosen for this game, mm. what would your score prediction be? Would it still be 2-1? Actually, no. No, part, no that's, a gra- actually, that's a great question. It's because I don't trust him to pick the yeah. right 11 or the right Ex- players. Exactly. So actually, if he went with one of the 11s we've suggested, I'd be more hopeful. What about my 11? <laughs> What, three players? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I used to hope for them. The, the, the false eight. <laughs> Let, Leno, the false Leno eight. taking goal kicks and then three running players, up the pitch to try Three players, no captains. It. I don't yeah. know what happens with set pieces. but yeah. that's, that's what it's down to, James. Is I don't know what Arteta is going to pick. So I, that's why my score prediction is that. If he went with one of, like you said, one of our twos. Oh, that's a great minutes. way of putting it, actually. Mm. Yeah, that, actually, that really opens James your eyes to how you feel about yeah, yeah. The manager. Arteta. And it makes you realise, no, nah, part of your doubt is because you don't of trust course. him to pick the right team. It's two steps forward, That's four steps back. That's how it feels like. You talked about making some progress in January, February. That's mm. the two steps forward. But since then, we've taken four back. Mm. And that just seems to be the Arsenal way. It's never four, four back. forward, two back. Down the stairs. Well, essentially, I'm being nice <laughs> with the four back. I'm just doubling up on how many we took forward. But yeah, falling down the stairs, that, that, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Cecil James. It's been fun. Eh? It's been great. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. Appreciate the starting 11s because we needed it from you two because, yeah, like I said. Can you imagine Arteta did a Turkish went, lads, whoever you want, pick up a bib. Yeah, <laughs> this, this guy, the first, oh, 11 on the pitch. Yeah. first 11 on the pitch, go and give you your best, mate. Yeah. <laughs> but people, this has been the warm up for Newcastle. Apologies that I couldn't get myself up any more than. I have done, if I've even done pause, that. Pause, that sounds mad, but yeah. Yeah, it sounded a bit mad <laughs> still. It sounded a bit mad, yeah. There ain't no chance of Arsenal getting me up right now, that's for sure. Mad or not. 
but they can do next Thursday. Let's see if they get it done, people. Thank you, Cecil James. Look, look the laughter started. At least we can end on that note. At least we can end on this note, oh, people. Make sure you let us know your thoughts oh, in the comment Lord. section below. Ending it with a smile, love and peace. Everyone take care. Oh, man.